Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel here today. Today we're going to be watching the Hibiki Euphonium OVA. It's called the Ensemble Contest OVA. Ensemble Contest Arc, excuse me. There's a poll on the channel. Put the poll on screen right now. You should join that poll and vote in that poll if you are interested in anything on screen. You can do that through my Discord. Join the Discord, go to the poll section, click on the Google Forms link and fill out the form. And yeah, that'll, that'll inform what I watch next. Pure democracy, baby, we love it. All these things have such weird names, especially, we'll get into it last week. Um, so yeah, we're back. This is the next step on our Hibiki Euphonium journey. And it requires some context, like a lot of what I do on the channel does. So the last thing that we watched, the Chikai no Finale film that came out in 2019, right? And now let's get precise here. When did this particular OVA come out? It came out in 2023, in August of 2023. So that is a good four years between the last thing we watched and the thing we're watching here today. I'm lucky enough that I didn't have that gap. I wasn't there waiting because I hadn't seen Chikai no Finale yet, so I didn't really have that much waiting time really between this and that. But I can imagine that's pretty torturous, especially the way that Chikai no Finale ends in a pretty, I'd say it ends in a satisfying spot, but not for the club overall. Like, the second year's done. They can't make nationals now. That sucks. And it makes me question where we're going next, but I guess I'll do that at the end of the YouTube comments because I've got them up here and I could finally do YouTube comments on this series because, you know, it's it's something I haven't seen. I'm, I'm learning things, which is cool. Not that I wasn't learning things before, but, but you know what I mean. First comment here from Pencil Sharp. Scattered comments and trivia. The letters being called out are rehearsal marking for the group to start in the middle. B as in Beethoven is for clarity since letters can sound the same. I see. So yeah, when we're yelling those out, we're saying, uh, what is it? particular rehearsal markings so people can find them and know which section we're talking about, I guess. I'm happy you wrote this here so I have a good jumping off point to talk about it, right? What's the deal with that movie being called Chikai no Finale, right? What was the what was it called in English? Hang on. Our Promise Brand New Day. Sorry for the scuffed framing. Um, That one's a little bit better, but Chikai no Finale is insane, right? Because at that moment, Kyoto Animation knew they were making more. They did circumstances happened, but they, they knew they were making more. So finale is an insane word to put in something like that. Because I specifically remember when I didn't know much more about the series, I saw something coming out with finale on it. I'm like, oh, that's a bit weird. I thought there was going to be way more. And then I didn't seek it out, probably in part because I didn't hear fantastic word of mouth initially, and it was not publicly available. And it said finale on it, so I don't know, maybe I just wanted to leave things as they were. Indeed, it seems like it was always meant to be a middle piece, and definitely feels that way in practice. We go into a few other scattered thoughts here on Shuichi. He and Kumiko are childhood friends, but no longer children. They both have been unhappy with their relationship from episode one, but Kumiko is mostly avoiding it. And I think that's pretty interesting. Um, this little phrase here was one of the main like turning points for me, actually understanding what's going on here. Her relationship with Shuichi is mirroring her relationship with her parents and what they want for her, and specifically the father, and going further in school and the future, right? That's why there's so much of Kumiko running. She's running away from stuff. She's avoiding it. And th her best moments are the moments when she realizes that and can stand her ground and actually say what she thinks. It's when she's not solid, when she's wishy-washy, that problems start to arise. I think, yeah, a more... It's, it's her growing up story. It's her learning lessons. And I guess we're just kicking this lesson further down the road in a way that probably isn't fantastic. There's probably going to be some drama about that in season three. It's not a correct decision, but it's an interesting narrative decision, which I do like. This one's just a straight up, I missed this because I don't recognize names very well. Uh, Motomu, right? What, what, is, what is Motomu's last name? I'm going to guess it's Sukinaga, right? And then we have Sukinaka Genchan Sente from uh, Ryusei, which was the school that won. So there's some drama there. He's not going to the school which his father, presumably his father, is uh, advising the club of, right? There's some angst there. He wants to go to a different school. He wants to separate himself. He doesn't want to be associated with his family name. Clearly, again, more set up for future stuff. We're going to find out more there. Apparently, Kumiko and Midori silently acknowledge once they discover Genchan Sensei's last name. 
or first name, depending on your perspective, I guess. Apparently Asuka and Kaori were wearing matching rings when they showed up. Now that's that fucking shit I'm looking for. That's good. Hell yeah. We come through here with some practical reasons about the side not making nationals. The senior class was half its size, essentially, right? Because of the second years, the second years were dwindled down to a very small group. Again, that's pretty crucial knowledge if you've watched the show. Also, Liz was cut down, right? So the important parts were still there, but not so much the development. So it's a full 22 minute suite, essentially, this is what it's meant to be. And if we're cutting that down to eight minutes for competition, that's not fantastic. So sure, judges may not like that. I definitely saw this too, Kanade as that little devil on Kumiko's shoulder. Definitely an aspect of Kumiko that has been expressed in another character's form, I feel. And I can definitely see this too, after watching the film and having my expectations set for what it's actually going to be, finding some pretty good nuggets in the scenes, in every scene, right? That is contributing towards the film's major message, which is the Kumiko Kanade stuff. So, again, I think it's a little bit scattershot, but that's neither here nor there. Next comment here from Ice, just simply Kumiko my beloved, and I can't say I disagree. Um, <laughs> this has been posted quite a bit. I feel like I've seen this line every day of my life for the past few weeks. Next comment here from B Orphan. congratulations with 1K subs. Yeah, we did it. If I wanna mosey on over here, maybe. Uh, can you guys see that very well? Yeah, it's still just on the thousand, so please don't unsubscribe, that would be bad. But yeah, it, it is a good milestone, I like that, right? Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna commit to the whole joke here from Ice as well. Essentially, that this is some yap. He just yaps for fucking ages, right? And then the kicker at the very end is, I actually just made that all up. I don't know what I'm talking about. And for the record, I was in for a little bit, because I didn't read this part first, so I'm like... Okay, sure, sure, sure. This seems very wordy, but you know. And then, yes, it is a joke. Very, very cool. A few time codes here from GU824. Sure. Do we have another name? Yeah, no, GU, sure. This time code here is alluding to the Matomu stuff, which I feel like I've already gotten the gist of, right? Like, you know, I think they're related. At least I think so, right? Let me just check that. Let me just check that I'm not being insane. Yeah, Sukinaga, right? Sukinaga, Sukinaga. Sukinaga, Sukinaga. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure I'm on the right track there. This next time code here is about the postcard, which I'm still unsure about. I'm sure it'll become important. Something, something, there was sunflowers on the postcard. Don't know. And yeah, just kind of shouting out Kanade as being kind of the favorite character there. I'd say she's most certainly my favorite of the juniors. Um, I do like the one that's Elf Nine though. Now that I know it's Elf Nine, um, that's just good. That's good gear. I like that. Pardon the pun. Um, but yeah, Kanade Kumiko stuff definitely being the core element of the last film that I watched, which made it really good. I liked it. It was the best part. Next up here, we have a little bit of an essay here from Lazy Bear. First paragraph here arguing that potentially the movie is a little bit too fan -service -y. Um, I think that this is a contrivance because it's the same structure. It's the same year in the life of an ensemble contest team, right? Am I making any sense? Concert band club. It's the same... They're going to do the same thing. So, hey, yeah, it may feel fan service here that we went and did a camp again and camped at the exact same spot or did Sunfest, right? Like, these are important episodes from seasons one and two. But they also are things that they would be practically doing. And I don't know about the source material, things that are probably explored there as well. Me specifically, I really like the word for word, line for line stuff on the bus from the very start of the series between Reina and Corsica. Reina and Corsica? Oh my god, Reina and Kumiko, can I speak? Um, and at, at, at the bus between Kumiko and Kanade, right? Like, that felt like it was good cohesive whole stuff. And it's, but it, and it's definitely the point they're trying to get across with those particular characters in that scene. This next paragraph agreeing with me a little bit too, I feel like they crammed too much into the one movie. Again, I'm unsure about source material stuff and if this is necessary, right? I didn't even know if these characters have more content, right? But certain characters felt really good, like Kanade, we've talked about it. I even really liked Kabe, Kabe-chan Senpai. Yes, I really liked her as well. But the others, just a little bit undercooked. And again, with the context that now we have more to go off of, which again existed at the time as well, I can see that this is all set up, that there's more going on here and these characters have more to learn and more to see. This here, I, I don't know, maybe I missed something, but I'm imagining we're talking about Motomu as well, so we'll see how that happens in season three, but there's moments that pay off on stuff in this movie. It 
feels contiguous, which is good. Yeah, Kanade is very much a scheming character. I'm not quite sure what she's thinking at all times. She uses conversation in a pretty tactical way and says certain things to get certain reactions out of other people. She's very aware of her own emotions or sometimes, and other people's emotions and what will get a rise out of them. Kind of like Kumiko. Kumiko pokes and points at other people all the time, but has these momentary slip-ups where she'll say the wrong thing or say exactly what's on her mind and not exactly think about all these other emotional reactions. In that way, she is similar and different to Kumiko, I find. And yeah, about here, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I like the movie. I think it's a good movie. Um, is it as good as the rest? Maybe not. But, you know, it's still good. It's still Hibike. It's still... It's still fun. With the counterpoint here, we have Pencil Sharp with the next comment here. I don't think I agree with Chikai being unfocused. Not nearly as focused as Liz, and fast compared to the TV seasons, but Mire and Kabe builds directly into Kanade's story. Shuichi lets us see another side of Kumiko, and how she feels about the main plot, and is a big connecting thread from season 1 into the future. I'm a big defender of this movie, I think it gets shit on because of poor expectations based on it not being the best thing ever. I, I agree, it's not the best thing ever. I think it's a, I think it's good. I think it's a good film. Uh, and I agree with all this. In hindsight, in kind of stepping away from the movie, being less close to it, I do see how all these things kind of link together in a way. At the end of the day, sometimes I just want that character, that like kind of slice of life sense that, um, you know, Hibike has sometimes. I just want the characters to talk shit sometimes. You know, it, it, kind of the movie format doesn't leave much room to do that. I do think, yeah, people... People and expectations are so weird with anime, man. They're so, so weird. So you can see something like this and be like, eh, whatever. So let me get up, Mel. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a test with you right now. Now, this won't be particularly hard, but we've got a score of 7.78 here. I want you to find me a show that is far worse than this. Far, far worse. This is homework, by the way. I want you to show me a show that is far worse than this that has a higher rating than this. It is so easy. It is so, so easy to do. Listen, I can do this right now. I can just click on top anime and just scroll till I've rated something lower. Like this. <laughs> Bazinga! Now I'm going too crazy. Eh, Fruits Basket Finale. Eh, they're pretty similar in my mind. I don't know. Uh, what's a good example here? Jujutsu Kaisen. I'll definitely take um, what I saw last week over Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Most definitely. And this, for the record. That's Now we're getting spicy. Anyway, enough about my mal. It gets a little bit, again, a little bit spicy. <laughs> And just one more comment from Pencil Sharp for the road. I want to highlight some of the staff that are no longer working on Hibike after Chikai. Naoko Yamada and Haruka Fujita both left Kyoto Animation in the 4.5 year gap to Ensemble Contest. Many of the series core staff were killed in the arson, including character designer Shoko Ikeda, chief animation director and Liz character designer Futoshi Nishia, and musical instrument designer Hiroyuki Takahashi. And that fucking sucks. We fucking hate that. That being said, I've heard nothing but good things about the new stuff. So I'm excited to jump in. This is, yeah, this is, this came out like last year. How, how novel is that? That's cool. And there's more airing right now. Right now. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring that up now. I'm going to bring up the Ensemble Contest OVA. Apparently it's about 40 minutes and... Again, should be a little bit more normal to what I normally do on the channel, which is go back through the episode and see what we think, that kind of thing, and try to figure some stuff out. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that now. I guess, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about my expectations. I don't know if this thing is going to be in year three yet. I don't think it is. I think we're going to start year three with season three. I think that this is going to be whatever we're doing in the meantime, now that we're not in competition anymore. Does that make any sense? Like, we're not in the, the big wide school competition. Maybe there's a little mini competition we can aim for, right? Something where we're going to, you know, fix up some loose ends from the second year, that kind of thing. Um, that's my expectation. I could be wrong. We could be introducing a whole bunch of new characters again. I just don't know. So we're going to watch that right now. Um, it just finished downloading, which is awesome. Um, just some chill stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, I should put this at the start of the video again. Um... Maybe I'll copy it twice, but there's a poll on the channel. Put the poll on screen right now. You should join that poll and vote in that poll if you're interested in anything on screen. You can do that through my Discord. Join the Discord, go to the poll section, click on the Google Forms link, and fill out the form. And yeah, that'll that'll inform what I watch next. Pure democracy, baby. We love it. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to watch the thing now. Uh, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> I'm not even going to do full shill stuff. I don't care. Um... 
So yeah, I'll, I'll see you in a second. Oh wait, I didn't know this thing was like an hour. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, I have the time, it's fine. But okay, we, we may have to change tact again. It may be um, very similar to the movie analysis stuff. I may write notes and do that kind of thing. Because going back through an hour of content is very tedious. I know because I did it for Katana Gatri like 12 weeks in a row. And it almost killed me. But that's another thing entirely. Um, so yeah, I've got the... Let me get some stuff up for you. I've got the Takanishi subset thingo. It's pretty recent. It seems like the most recent fan sub. There's no official sub, I don't think. So it'll be what it is. Obviously, it'll be subbed. There'll be a picture and picture in the description below if you can't source this particular copy yourself. And yeah, I mean, I'm just going to like watch it. I guess I can pop it up on screen and say that it's 57 minutes and 11 seconds. I'm kind of all over the place today. Anyway, I'm going to hit play on it now. Right here. Three, two. One, go. Okay. Ink splot. Fujisan? Yeah. How smart am I? I'm pretty switched on. I'm also recording, which is good. Hello, Kyoto Animation. It's been a while. Mostly because I don't watch um the archery one whose name's escaping me at the moment. Yeah, that's that shit. Yep, shiny. What are we thinking about, Kumiko? Put me on. Just wistful. That's fine too. That's a cute picture. The couple of they're like contrabass, double bass over there on the side look very effective. That looked like CG. And that shot there in one of the pictures looked like something from one of the openings. Yeah, it looks pretty similar. Making memories, baby. Look at all that shit. There's some k vibes for sure. Ririka, we love Ririka. It's a really clever opening, especially for a, such a long gap between, <laughs> who took that picture? Um, especially between the, the, the time difference, right? Just reminding us of what has happened. Essentially a very creative recap. That looked incredible. Kanade, oh no. Yeah, get everyone in the picture, why not? Now, question mark, they are in their kind of summer uniforms, right? And I don't see a lot of third years. Or not. Come on, get ready. I'm guessing you're going to have to do president stuff. You gotta take control. Also, who's vice president and everything? I wanna see that too. Maybe Raina? Yeah. And Shuichi? Oh no. Shut up. Pay attention. 
Okay, undivided attention. Yeah, start speaking. That's your role. Okay, now in December. But I'm guessing the third years of studying. I don't know how the Japanese school year works. Okay. Oh. College is interesting. How small? Oh. Christmas vibes, maybe, as well? Oh, so how are we going to do that? Super auditions? Rain is a natural at this. Auditions? Oh, drama. A con end an audition? Concert end audition? She's not quite convincing yet. She needs some work on her leadership skills. Yeah. She's very... I was going to say awkward. Very stiff. Very official. Doesn't seem like the real Kumiko. Yeah. Slamming the blackboard's funny. No, that's good. Oh yeah, that's so also very true. Anybody that's done any kind of public speaking. I get exhausted after these videos. Yeah, what time of year is it? Probably you. That seems like a pretty good mix. That's a that's a great leader thing to do, actually. That would be really fun. Oh, look at her hair. <laughs> I love Raina. We know. Sasuga. <laughs> Oh, look at his hair, it's all poofy. Your hair already looks poofy, so like... Must be cold, true. Oh, that was really fun. Yeah, go on. Oh. So everyone's going to vote on everybody? It actually is a good skill to be able to objectively evaluate performance. But it generally doesn't work that way in high school. I hope I get to see Yuko, that'll be good. <laughs> Rock in a hard place, Kumiko. Make a decision. What do you actually want?
And then what's the weighing system, Kumiko? Yeah, Kumiko, you didn't think this through at all. That's just polling both groups. That's just what Shuichi wants. Okay, so you just agree with Reina. Okay. Sure. Democracy, huh? Oh, no. Who are you talking to, Kumiko? The audience? <laughs> yes. Okay. You don't ever have to apologize for that. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> it most certainly is. Everyone's fucking lying to each other. I just assumed. No. That's very specific. Who are you? Okay, bye. Thanks for the info, though. Raina wants to do as good as possible. But there's a responsibility as a leader to do what's best for the, the whole club. I do like the idea of her joining with whoever's left. Hardly got any time for yourself, huh? That's how you know it's good filmmaking. I can pick up what the point of the scene is before they even say it. Hmm? Sounded like Raina. What? Some scary person? No, I think I know who it is. <laughs> yeah, hello, Misery. She can't open the window. She's very frail and weak. Hello. Not at all. <laughs> Nantonaku. What a nice guy. Indeed, I watched Liz and the Bluebird.
You should go talk to her about it. She would love to hear that. <laughs> oddly specific. Yeah, it's because she's strong. Well, <laughs> is that what I, is that my outward appearance? Because that's not what I feel inside. What a great scene. I loved that. Okay, everyone's picking groups. Only Euphonium player left. Yes. Earth to Kumiko. Oh, she doesn't answer to president yet. That's great. Hokago? How do you guys know all this stuff? Head pats. Head pats for the Kohai every single time. Have you? <laughs> it's like the point of the show almost. Thanks. Oh. Wow. My new leader. <laughs> Okay, so don't apologize as much. Yeah, rely on your friends. Yeah, not really at all. She's putting together the fucking Avengers. I haven't really been doing that for myself at all. Just check in. Should get it repaired. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> How do you know so much about fish? What's going on there? Yeah, explain. Okay. Good old dad. It's 
pretty late in the day. I guess that's the reality of, you know. Yeah. I don't think I know much about him. He's very serious. Okay. Octet. You didn't ask me first. Funny. <laughs> she was trying to play like you know, she's trying to be cute. Play hard to get a little bit. Okay. Okay. I I recognize all these people from the background. What an odd thing to say. Oh yeah, Monica, I remember. <laughs> yeah, come on. Get with the program. A little bit of English. Mm hmm. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to be here. Head up. Head up, champ. Okay. We're not that impressive. Wakaru. Thank you, Kumiko. Yeah, we know. You're like the ace. And yeah, octet, eight of them. Makes sense. Oh. I wonder how we're going to construct the rest of this. Because obviously there's a competition at the very end. How much of this is going to be auditions? How much of this is going to be practicing for said auditions? Hmm. 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 I don't know about this. What was this scene with Haruko? Oh, yeah, shit. You're so right. Oh, cute. Okay, a little bit of personal training. Con bases, con bases only is interesting.
This is why I really liked the idea of leaving yourself open. Hmm. One has a key. Interesting. <laughs> you sure? You sure it wasn't for other different reasons? Interesting. I agree. Especially Raina. Yeah. <laughs> oh, little blush. I would have thought so. I thought that she was a better player. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You guys are cute. But um, more to the point, I like this as a further exploration of the two sides of Kumiko and choosing between them, right? Trying to build a skillful team to do well, to perform well, versus doing what's best for the group. And am I just doing what's best for the group? Is that a default way of just kind of going with the flow like I used to? Am I just on autopilot? Does she need to make her own decisions a little bit more? I wonder. I wonder if we'll explore that. I wonder if there's going to be a better player next year. Oh, we're just having a look. Hello, guys. Thank you, Nozomi. Well, that's great. How did you get your marks back so quickly? That's insane. Congratulations. There you go. Oh, that's great. Okay, so they're going to have a little go too. And that helps your little problem.
Oh. Yeah, you're busy. I'm also too good for it. It's Liz and the Bluebird stuff. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, the stuff where it's like, I'm glad you asked. That's straight up from um, Liz and the Bluebird. <laughs> they didn't ask me at all. Hmm. Don't care. How cold's your juice box? Natsuki, important information, you're playing. <laughs> like the class in the background watching is great. Wow. Quickly run away, because that's going to explode soon. Good. Sick. All right, I think I'll get a better grasp of who's in whose group um, come time for auditions. Yeah, Kumiko being like pulled between her own stuff and leading the group is a big theme here. Are you rushing or are you dragging? Come on, join, quick. Oh, the doors are. We know. It's a really cute piece. Sounds fine to me, but again, I'm not like a music guy. Come on, be objective. Do you have the time? Oh, she's playing the flute. I thought it sounded like a flute.
That'd be great, actually. I'm glad you volunteered yourself and I didn't have to ask you. Because otherwise it would seem like I'm singling out people. Okay, stop throwing punches, devil girl. <laughs> Maybe a little bit sometimes, but what you're doing is correct as well. Yeah. Maybe Kumiko with just a bit of a lighter touch. You're a bit sledgehammer, Reina. Just a little bit. You guys just have different strengths. These two need to get a room this OVA as well. They're going crazy. Get them, Hazuki. Again, I'm such a layman. This sounds fine to me. Like, that sounded good. Mmm, objectively looking at one's own music. Interesting. She was already in Kanade's little group. She's got to, she's got to uh, feel, not think a little bit. That seems very obvious. Yeah, you just get in the zone. It's good. He would know. <laughs> uh, if somebody told me to consider the importance of basics when doing something, I would fucking cry. Wait, were you invited? Got the metronome? Sure. Two. Mm, mm, mm. I love the shot. Seems like she's on time. To me. What did we do? What did we do to do that? Gets muddled with everything else. Interesting. I see. I get what Raina means. These people are skillful, but they have other things holding them back. Yeah, what if you set the rhythm? I don't know if that's practical or not, but... Sound supposed to sound. Just 
Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Breathing's very important. <laughs> yeah, we literally talked about that earlier. Yeah, it's important that we share knowledge. It's good. Also a place where we can openly, constructively criticize other people. Interesting. Breathing together is also like we've come together, right? We're all on the same page. Well, she's thinking about breathing as well. Oh, thank you, Mirei Chan. Mi Chan. <laughs> yeah. We always say those that can't do teach. Sometimes. I'm just doing my thing. It is nice when somebody else says it. Oh, look at that drumstick. Hell yeah. Okay. She's punching a lot in this. She's violent. Oh, because she's like, oh yeah, I'm excited to go up against you. That's great. Team pacifist. No. How so? Oh, so he gets to see the individual talents, gets to see who's good, and gets to make them shine. A little bit. But it's literally not even the year yet. <laughs> I'll be back to normal tomorrow. You weren't in that movie. In a way. Yeah, I agree. I'd be extremely nervous. Three, two, one, go. Surely you can get um, Shuichi to help. They normally have the boys move all the instruments, I remember. Hey, as a team, you know? Bit of three, two, one, go. Yes. It's true. It, yeah. I don't think uh, Kumiko's ever been scared. Scared is like something bad's going to happen. Nervous is like, I don't know if something good or bad's going to happen, right? It's a perspective shift. I disagree.
Of course it is. That's nice. It's also um, her and Hazuki are a couple characters that um, haven't done the proper competition before. Oh, now she's going off on her own. That's great. Like, they've never been in the competition competition. That's why it's rewarding. So leadership's cool sometimes. How long do we have left? About 10 minutes. Look at these two nerds. Do we think this would be a good performance, guys? Come on. It sounds okay. I was giving him shit. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Raina. <laughs> Hands in. What are we going to say? Sure. Kita Uji Faito. And this is very similar to um, the very start of the movie, too. I've never heard anybody else play this piece. Like anybody else come in, I guess. I've only heard the um the UFO and the Marimba. I've heard way more Marimba in my life than I ever thought thought I had or ever thought I would. Would? Would? Can I speak? There was a kid at school who used to play the marimba a lot. And I heard it a lot. Because <laughs> he played it like every assembly. Oh, we're just going to hear the music. No, but this is... This is only the one piece that... um That our eight were playing, that our octet. We're just seeing who was in the different groups. Okay. Cute. Yes. Based. I hope they win just for shits and gigs. Sound of Youth. That is a stacked team, though. Okay. I do like these subs, too, for fan subs. They're pretty good. Revolutionario? Sure. Everyone... We haven't seen another really big group. Well, there was, but you know what I mean. Seems like a lot of really clicky stuff. That's another big group. There you go. Oh, fun. That's, um, that's Kanade's group. Hisaishi. Three flutes just, tr just chilling, you know. Cute. Who's this Harry Potter looking motherfucker? What's this? Melody from Orifice and Eurydice? 
He's a first year? He looks like fucking Taki. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be very interesting to have all the percussion people playing as well. Okay. Well, we won the public vote, but somebody else won the internal one. Yeah. Okay, sure. I wonder what will become of them. I don't know. Okay, a few days later. Thoughts, gamers? It's a choco bun. How can it be bad? Come on. Get with the program. What's wrong with that? Trade? <laughs> Why did they have to pop off that hard? What the hell? How do you reckon they went? That's good. Okay. Really good clarinet players. Interesting choice that we don't even get to hear it. Yeah, in season three. See you in season three, she says to the camera. I'm well aware. Ah, scary. Oh, cute. Cause that's what they say at the end of episodes. Credits. Who the hell's singing? Is it true? Is it? Anyway, I'll see in a second. That was good. I enjoyed myself. Um, it was very much OVA um, in that, hey, it isn't very, it isn't particularly deep. We're not delving in super deep to any character stuff. But I did say I was missing the slice of lifey um, Hibeka Euphonium stuff. I did think it told a decent story as well. It showed uh, Kumiko's internal struggle already between, you know, her own personal life, the club, what's good for the club. And being better, right? So a lot of the seasons one and two and everything else about Kumiko deciding to give this a real shot to try her best and put it all on the line and that kind of thing. Now that is has a pretty legitimate conflict. I'm actually almost on the other side. Not that Haruka ever did this, but I felt like Haruka was a president that kind of put aside her own personal like being the best player type stuff for the good of the team. And again, that caused angst between her and Asuka, but like also it's a good leadership thing. Just because you're the best player doesn't mean you're the best leader, you know? The dynamic between Haruka and um, 
Asuka is probably very similar to the one that'll be between Kumiko and Reina. And that Reina's just this ace, and she's charismatic, and she's, you know, she can bring people in, where Kumiko is just nice, at least to her own perception. So I'm wondering if that'll be a direction going forward. I really, really like the scene where they're lifting the marimba. I think that's a standout. I really, really liked it. It was a little bit anticlimactic, um, not seeing many of the auditions, that kind of thing. It is true. Good. You'd have to imagine she's on a new opening for the new season, too. Which I'm very, very excited to say. What else even happened? I don't know, um... We got some nice uh, Misery stuff and a few nice Yuko scenes here and there. Uh, it helped introduce us to a bunch of new characters that will probably have greater roles in Season 3, you'd think, at least somewhat. Like, now I know, you know, a, a, another person in the percussion team. I now know a few people that were now a little group that played other instruments, right? Even that one random character design that walked up to um to Kumiko when she was in the classroom that just kind of said that Raina was already asking around about people. I really thought her design was very evocative. Again, it's easy in something like, say, like Chihaya Furu, right? Where you have a very small club and you introduce to all the members and then they go off to competitions. It's easy to follow all their personal stories. But obviously with a, you know, 50-person ensemble, something like that, it becomes a little bit harder. Oh, well, a lot bit harder. But they did a pretty good job. I now, across just seeing them as background characters and interacting and stuff, across all the stuff we've seen so far, it's like culminating. I feel like I know the group a lot more now, which is great. This song's really fucking cool too. It's got a real like fanfare vibe about it. Feels very, um, finale. Feels very closing. Like the curtain call, you know? Indeed. Alright, that was, that was Encon, everybody. And yeah, we'll go into a little bit of analysis on that. I don't know if I'll go straight through it moment by moment or notes yet i'm gonna go eat something and then come back and decide so whatever i decide will happen it's true so yeah that was the ensemble contest ova from hibeke euphonium and very very enjoyable i liked my time here today i've decided to do what i normally do which is just go back through it again i've currently got it on three times speed so we'll speed our way through obviously we're not going you know scene by scene, framing wise, checking what everything means. I'm basically just going to say what comes to the old dome piece here. Um, and yeah, I mean, I mean, it'll help me get the plot again, which will help jog the memory, which will help say, hey, what we learned at the very end here, right? You know, after all this and here and that kind of thing, what we learned here, how was this expressed early in the piece? And how was it kind of cohesive in that way and brought in themes early that were explored later on. Just overall, I feel like this was an important step in our year two journey. I feel like the characters like each other. I feel like they want to see each other succeed. I feel like they're, they're good to each other. I really like, this is a really weird thing to shout out. It was somewhere here. I reckon it was somewhere here somewhere. Yeah, right here. Kumiko finishing president work and all three of her besties waiting for her still. You would think well after school is finished. You know, because we like walking home together, we like traveling home together. That's a good thing that we can do together, you know? Just like, yeah, some all in this together type vibes. I really liked that. It, it helped the group overall, as well as our main characters, feel like besties, which is good. That That is the benefit of slice of life content in a show like this. Because let's be real, this whole thing, the stakes aren't as high as normal stuff, right? There's not a... We've kind of already done the high stakes part, which is the, the band stuff, the concert band competitions, you know? Now that we've, you know, flunked out of that competition, at least for this year, it's nice to do a little fun thing to keep our mind occupied. It's like if everybody... Remember the Monaco OVA? 
it's like if everybody was in the Monaco OVA, right? We're just doing something light, something fun that we can practice together that'll tide us over until the next year. That's not to say there isn't deep stuff in it. I really, really like, and I've said this a couple of times, Kumiko's kind of sides pulling her in either direction, right? So we have this side that is the, I guess, relationship with Raina, right? The striving to be better, the wanting to improve, the the giving a shit, the putting effort in, all those things that season one and two are about, right? But then we have this added pressure. We're, we're Haruka now, right? We also need to make sure that everybody is having a good time and cooperating and you know, playing to their best ability, and we need to give it good advice when we're supposed to, we need to, where are we here, we need to make decisions somewhere along the way as well, I don't know, my VLC is kind of slow today, but yeah, here, make decisions, we need to make decisions sometimes, and Kumiko is a fence sitter, she's indecisive sometimes, she doesn't want to offend different people, especially literally Shuichi and Reina. Like, she doesn't want to offend either of these people, so she doesn't have an actual opinion on what the best way to go is, right? She comes up with a decent compromise in the end, but it is a messy compromise. It isn't as clean as either of these two approaches. Both of which are valid, by the way. I did like how we did see the two different, I guess, scores at the very end. And kind of almost Kumiko admitting to herself that, hey, maybe the maybe the public vote one was a bit of a popularity contest. Because, hey, the people in the club, the people that are around you know, concert band music a lot. They're hearing the clarinet quartet and they're like, they're, yeah, they're the best ones. So, you know, they would know what they're talking about as opposed to everyone else that just sees, oh, hey, there's eight people in this, a few of which are extremely popular characters. They would probably have a lot of friends and those friends would probably vote for them. You're telling me if there's senpais there, they're not voting for the team that has Kumiko and Reina on it? Like, come on, let's be serious. So yeah, just fun little stuff like journeys like this. I feel like this is what a lot of season three is going to center around the conflict in Kumiko between being a good player personally, a good skillful proponent of the euphonium versus being a good leader for the group. And what does good leadership look like to her? She will need to draw on different sources for this. I'd love for her to have a little conversation with Asuka, who by all accounts wasn't you know, the most fantastic leader all the time because her heart wasn't in it all the time. She had a personal thing that she had going on as well that was kind of distracting her from it. And Haruka was better in certain aspects. Like, talk about it. You've got a wealth of experience and knowledge at the at, the, at, your, at your fingertips, right? What did Yuko do in year two or in year three? In, when, when she was president, learn from her. What did she do good? What could she have done differently? You know, talk to Natsuki, talk to Nozomi, talk to all these people we tangentially know in the club. Kabichan senpai probably knows some stuff too. You have a wealth of knowledge, I hope that you use it. Either way, I'm kind of yapping, so I think I'm just going to start and then call out things that I like. Didn't take long, uh, I really like this opening. Um, I think it's classy. It isn't very anime, it's very Hibika Euphonium. Let's just show a bunch of pictures on screen of all the different characters and all the different journeys we've had so far. Remind us of stuff that has come before, like immediately before in, in the second year, as well as the first year through various photographs on a board. There's also a theme in the movie about kind of uh, chalkboards, chalkboards, corkboards in general, um, pinning stuff up because Kumiko's got her little whiteboard and they pin up, pinning up the posters as well, right? Just helps it to feel like school. Um, and it's, you know, it's classy. It feels classy, you know? Also, yeah, I, I mean, we don't really get to see people doing concert band stuff a lot. Like, there's no big animated performance. This is probably the closest we get, and it looks fantastic. There is some really, really subtle and fantastic use of CG through here. All the instruments look great. All the characters look fun and uniquely designed. Just beautiful. We love it. I'm not sure you need somebody to tell you that Hebeke Euphonium is an insanely impressive production. This is cute, though. I like this. Yeah, question, who, who who took this photo? Like the one where Yuko's like dying? Yeah, here, who took this? That's funny. <laughs> oh no. Another really effective one there is the photo switch between um, kind of, yeah, who came before us to who's now in the base kind of group. I think it's good. It's effective. It shows the passage of time. We jump back to Kumiko. She's immediately flustered because she's been kind of off on her own practicing, but then we get pulled in, 
We need to get everybody's attention because, hey, we've got a new leadership group in front of us. Kumiko is president, which we already knew. But now we know who's supporting her. We have the drum major, which is Shuichi. I'm pretty sure this is just third in charge, I think. Um, and our vice president, which is Reina. Oh, excuse me. Is vice president Shuichi and you're the drum major, Reina? Or is the drum major the vice president and Shuichi's just up there for shits and gigs? I'm confused. Um... Kumiko and Reina are in charge, essentially. Shuichi's doing a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah, the drum major is like Asuka, right? Because Asuka was leading the um when we went to Sunfest. So again, I'm not going to talk about everything here. I'm trying not to pause constantly, but it's very hard. It turns out there's a lot to see. I love how stiff and official Kumiko is here. The slap of the board, the getting flustered when Hazuki kind of responds to her and like kind of addressing her personally instead of addressing the entire group. Just some, <laughs> I see a lot of myself in it when I first started to do like public speaking and that kind of thing. Um, not that I'm anywhere near good anymore, but I used to be decent. So, you know, <laughs> there's just, yeah, a few things. She does a few no-nos here. She's still learning the ropes. I find these scenes interesting and in how it recontextualizes what we've seen before. Like, I think if, if Kumiko's having these kind of reactions after her little public speaking sessions, right? Couldn't you imagine... Uh, Haruka and Asuka having very similar conversations, right? And we just weren't privy to them, right? Because we didn't get to see them. We saw the show through Kumiko's point of view. So yeah, it's like really fun. Like, oh, they probably had similar conversations. No, no, from that piece of dialogue there, Shuichi's vice president. So you're vice president, you're president, you're drum major. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm back. I'm so back. This stuff here very early with Raina and like kind of coyly asking Kumiko if she's got any plans of who to work with yet. Comes back many times throughout the OVA. Um, clearly she wants to work with Kumiko, but doesn't want to ask her immediately because wants to give her her own space and that kind of thing. They eventually come together and join together and stuff, and it's all very cool. Again, I'm, uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record, because again, I'm not very far into this thing. But um, Kumiko is going with the flow in Kumiko's case as a leader just generally still doing leadery stuff? Is that her reverting back to how she used to be and just in a new role? Like, is she just going to be a generic leader? When in reality, she could be a leader with purpose and a leader that focuses on her own playing a lot more and that kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. It's up to her. Because again, I think in real life, I would definitely be the type of person as a leader to let everybody else choose who they want to choose first and then kind of pair up with whoever's left like kind of it's that classic whoever's last picked in the sports team in the schoolyard you know you want to pair out with them they feel ostracized they feel alone you can supervise them you can see what's wrong with them or if there's anything wrong with them like yeah i think that would be a better leadership move but is that the most aspirational right is that the most effortful is that the most trying your best is that the thing at the end of the day when you led this group and we lost, is that something you can cry about? I will say, I think every one of the voice actors here has matured a little bit. Their voices have changed, which is noticeable. Um, I would say that um, Tomio Kurosawa in particular is a way better voice actress now. She is killing it as Kumiko. And she already was, but like even more so. She's taken it to another level, I feel, which is great. That's just fantastic. Either way, the conflict in this scene, I've kind of already talked about it. So everybody's doing the contest, blah, 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 blah. blah. We're going to have to do auditions. We're going to have to figure out who wins. It's not just going to be me and Matsumoto sensei anymore. It's going to be you guys. You guys are going to choose who's going to be successful. How are we going to do that? Shuichi says we should do it through a public vote because they're not as biased as the people that would be inside the four doors of the club itself, where Raina disagrees. She thinks that the people in the club should be choosing. Kumiko, again, because of these two characters and her personal persuasion to be a bit of a fence sitter, tries to find a compromise. And it did work, but again, is that going to work forever? Can you compromise on everything? Is there some times where you need to put your foot down and stop apologizing? I also like how Raina thinks that his poofy hair is really cute. That's just cute. I just wanted to say that as well for this scene. Again, the compromise now is that, hey, we're getting more data from two different groups, but only one of those groups' opinions actually matter. And those are, again, the opinions of the people within the four walls of the club. Interesting one. I would have went the other way, personally. I think there's a lot of internal politics within clubs that other people outside could maybe more or less objectively view. But they're not classical music experts either, so, you know... 
I understand the, the, the arguments for and against. Is there a thing between Rurika and Kanade? They seem close. This is cute. I like this. This is the original fucking odd couple because you're just the sweetest and you're sometimes not. Like, she's always punching the camera and shit. She's fucking... You're crazy, Kanade. So Rurika is the first one to put together a group. Kanade is already on the prowl, asking different people. Everyone's getting more serious. Mira is already in a group as well. She says no comment. Um, when asked if she's in a group, so she's clearly already there. People are pretty serious. They're, you know, putting together their groups with their favorites very, very quickly. There's also a limited number of different instruments, so if you want to play in a quintet with a certain instrument, you've got to get in very quickly. Isn't this also a microcosm of your entire problem with with Michan or Michan's entire problem with you last last movie? Like you just assumed you didn't ask her. Anyway, weird. I know it's meant to be a joke, but funny. Yeah, this is the character I was talking about before. This is a pretty cool design for somebody that clearly is just like in this scene. I don't know if she'll be a bigger thing later, but she looks cool. We also learn the information from her that Rain is already asking around people to join her group. She's put, uh, I think that was the Horn Major in with them as well. She's brought them into the fold. Again, I'm sure you could pause in all these scenes here and see various parties, um that we see at the very end, the groups that were split up into and how they're formed. Again, that's some more stuff for the fans that we really like. This is what I mean when I said like a cork board motif. Like we see a lot of this board during the rest of the film that I really like. Her list, her like organizing things. It's, you know, normal student council president type stuff. Even though I know she's not, she's the club president, but you know what I mean. I praise this part in the movie as well. I simply saw this shot and her kind of sigh and I'm like, oh, I instantly know what the conflict of this scene is. Hey, all this work is getting on top of me. It's hustling and bustling and making sure everyone else is all right, that I hardly have time for myself to practice. Again, the conflict that I keep talking about in the film. I do like a lot of different times, uh, Kumiko is just kind of talking to herself, talking to the audience, and then random characters just catch her doing so and are like, what are you doing? Like specifically here we have Misere calling out to her because she's sitting very close by, which scares Kumiko, um, asking if she's crying or not. Don't be scared, it's just me. And the, the window stuff's very cool. I like the window stuff. We'll talk about it here in a second when it's more relevant. But Misere just heard somebody out there and had a little look. I just love Misere. So her on screen is just fantastic. You know, just quietly caring after somebody just, oh, well, were you crying, um, Kumiko? Like, no, but I'm happy that you checked on me anyway. And we tell her that Rurika's doing a good job, which seems to please Misere. That's good to hear. We love that shit. And this is the shot in particular, right? And what's the line here? It's good that you know what you're doing. So, okay, I think we're caught up in the perspective of Kumiko a lot in all of the content of the show. Well, except for Liz and the Bluebird. But, hey, it's good that from the outside... Kumiko, you look like you've got a good head on your shoulders. You look like you've got shit under control. A lot of these nervous ticks that you do, like the slapping of the board and the conversation in the stairwell, nobody's really noticing them. I think you're doing better than you know right now. You may be nervous, but you outwardly portray strength. And that's ultimately what's important as a leader. Again, it's also Misere, so she may just be talking about the window, but I, again, I'm taking it as more of a, you're doing good. Like a, like a pat on the back from her. Well, that's another fantastic one. Um, here we have uh, Satsuki calling out to Kumiko, right? Hey, calls her Bucho, calls her Prez, right? And then Kumiko-senpai, and she answers to Kumiko. She doesn't answer to President yet. She's not quite there yet. She's transitioning into that. I'd love to see very early in Season 3, somebody call out to her as President, and she answered immediately like claiming the role a little bit more. Lots of little stuff. I love how she looks up at the board and sees only two euphonium players left. Kanade's already crossed off. Well, shit. Well, I'm now the second choice euphonium player in my own head. Maybe I'm not getting enough personal practice in, which she's trying to do a lot through the rest of the movie. That's why the scene very soon with the reassurance from Reina is very important. There's another really good line there as well. Like, I don't know if the ability to not feel jealousy and envy at other people is a virtue or a flaw? And again, that's a lot through the conflict in the entire series, right? Between, hey, going with the flow, let's just make good memories together, high school, let's go, versus, hey, this fucking sucks, I really wanted the part, I'm envious, I'm jealous, I feel terrible, I'm crying, I'm throwing up. You know, is there a happy in-between? 
I know which side of the fence Raina falls on, and we're alluding to Raina there as well. I wonder what she's thinking, blah, 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 blah. And we end this little scene here with a conversation with Raina, which helps reassure things, which is good. As I mentioned before, I really like how we have everybody sitting together here, just kind of waiting for Kumiko to finish. Helps the group feel like a group. It's good. I also like this little thing from Mithery, right? Where she's like, you should stop apologizing. Leaders don't apologize and second guess and that kind of thing. You should just do what you think is best. And we'll support you. We'll help you regardless. More good stuff. I like that a lot. Again, combining this kind of conversation here with what Misere was saying just before. Hey, you seem like you know what you're doing, right? Where, you know, they're talking about it right now. Hey, Kumiko, like if you apologize a lot and second guess yourself, it'll look like you lack strength. It'll make you look like a bad leader. We don't want that. We want a strong leader for this club for next year. Now, if I was writing season three, I would write a mini part where um, Kumiko questions if Reina should be the leader because she's extremely forthright and extremely, you, you know what I mean? She's very <laughs> black and white, let's say, and she never apologizes and she believes what she believes. Kumiko, on the other hand, is a little more wishy-washy, wants to be a people pleaser. So there may be a part mirroring Haruka and Asuka from season one, where Kumiko thinks, shit, maybe you should be president. And then we need to remind Kumiko of her qualities, right? It's not just that you're nice, you have good, unique things that make you a better leader sometimes. And we see that through the breathing segment here, where she actually learns what's wrong with these two people, uh, where Reina could not see that by herself. Just nice stuff. I hope that moves on to season three. A little bit of an awkward silence here when Kumiko starts to ask Reino, basically why you haven't asked me yet. You've started to put together a group and I wasn't the first one you asked. What gives? What is this part here where Reina's a fish expert as well? That's a little bit strange. Um, something about her father. Maybe we'll learn more about it as we continue. Maybe we'll go to Reina's house and see some fish or something. I don't know. Um, it leads into a conversation about Kumiko's father where she basically admits that I don't know much about him. He's pretty serious. Yeah, I don't know anything about your father. Well, we don't talk about little things like that. He's very big picture. A brewing conflict is coming between you and your father, potentially. Very similar way to um him and your sister as well. Again, very cute scene here where Kumiko's basically like, why didn't you ask me first? Blah, 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 blah. Putting on a little bit of a, a sulking face here. Tries to play hard to get, but then guess if I don't want to. And then, no, please, no, please let me in your group. Just really fun, really fun character stuff. Again, endears you to the characters, and that's what's most important in any of these Kyoto Animation things, really. So then we're putting together the team, we're putting together the fucking Kita Uji Avengers. Um, we have Morimoto-san, the horn player. We have inoue san the percussionist. We have the trumpet player, Kohinata-san. Um, I forget the name of... Remember the first year that was um, flirting with um, Shuichi? It's not you, but it was another It was another trombonist, I thought. Weird. Okay, I wonder if we'll pick that back up again. We bring up another percussionist as well, Kamaya-san, who is <laughs> a lot of the emotional center of the movie. Um, plays a fantastic part in my favorite part of the film, which takes place right about here. OVA, I should say. You know what I mean. And Komaya was also part of uh, Monica, right? With Hazuki, right? So they've got a little bit of a bond. Hazuki pushes for her to join as well. Because originally Komaya is like, hey, I'm not that good. I'm not ready for a competition like this. But we, we, we've we scattered you. We saw your talent, you know? Isn't that something? So yeah, Kamaya, Kamaya, cool character. I like her a lot. Also really cute Hazuki here. So yeah, I'm not shedding out all the cuteness. That'll be more when I have one episode a week. <laughs> I do like Kumiko's reaction upon learning that Shuichi's in the group as well. Just fucking pure hatred. Again, you didn't tell her you're fucking trolling, Reina. Thanks. I do like these um kind of interview style kind of headshots of each of the characters introducing themselves, helps to learn them and differentiate them. I like specifically you, you're the same age as Kumiko and the rest of them, right? And you're still so meek around them. You're like, it feels weird to be in this group full of executives. Yeah, a few characters here feeling a little bit nervous. Um, not you, you're, I think you're Juno or something. You're just killing it. Inoue, yeah. Oh, even this Kamaya stuff is very early. She like starts to hit a bit of the marimba. She looks very not confident. And then, yeah, that same sense of unease runs into Kumiko here, right? And I thought a lot of the conflict here was going to be her making a really personal decision and joining Reina and Shuichi and making that little group. 
that perfect octuplet group that can't have anybody else in it, and we're going to have stragglers left over. As it turns out, we just got some senpai in to help, which was nice. They helped remedy the issue, but we didn't address the root cause. Then that's the that's the drama for Kumiko. That's the two things pulling her different ways. So again, season three stuff. So then, okay, so there's two con bases, which end up being a duo, right? Midori and Motomu. And then the four clarinets, which is interesting, because then they go into a clarinet quartet and do very, very well. And they're like some of the few that were just left over. Isn't that funny, right? And then there were two extra stragglers. I think you end up joining um, uh, with Natsuki and them. This is a very interesting scene, kind of a replay from season one, a little bit of a flashback, when this character here calls Kumiko nice for what she did. Yeah, you're very kind, Prez. And it's like, my only strength is that I'm nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> am I a people pleaser? Or am I actually strong enough, like an Asuka? Like this conflict between Haruka and Asuka, right? How can I embody the both of them in the best way? I do like Midori here as well. She's essentially like, nobody asked me. I'm not expecting to do particularly well. So let's just use this as a duet to help teach Matomu some more stuff. To help coach him. That's a great reason to do it. <laughs> you are kind of throwing, but you also weren't asked to be in like a real proper... Um, group either and yeah this is where Midori says that those clarinets have joined a group as well so now we really just have two left over again in in real life in a real school setting you would take those two and you would make them join other groups but because we're so focused on making the best product possible we can't interrupt the kind of ideas that are already there like it's a very <laughs> we're choosing a piece that is specifically for five different instruments and we've gone and selected those five different instruments we can't just add a random flutist or something in right like that's just not how this is going to work therefore it would hinder other performances it wouldn't be fair we need to find a solution here we rely on our senpai again Raina and kumiko here are off to the side they're able to talk pretty objectively about the group they say that the tuba which is hazuki as well as our marimba player kamiya are the weakest links here they're the ones that need the most help oh i really like this as well so we have this character here Hinata, right um she's come up to Raina and taps her on the shoulder i want to be in your group i want to be better because i think you're a trumpet player as well no so that's just great that's somebody coming out of the shell and wanting to be better i think Raina would respect something like that quite a bit i think she's a little less prickly than she's outwardly perceived by the rest of the club i really like this interaction even though it's very brief there's a really cute scene here by the sink it's become a hibike euphonium classic just you know two characters by the sink just talking shit out and yeah if you if you're a kumiko reina guy this is your scene they're essentially like flirting with each other like the entire time but again it's that same old conflict am i picking you because you're my friend or are you skillful or that kind of thing rain has got a soft side as well i didn't want to be rejected by you i like kumiko here actually admitting that it would worry her if you went to kanade first and there's a very very indicative line at the end of this scene where she says hey i wonder if Raina would pick me first if there was a junior next year that was even better than me right somebody that was well better than me that absolutely cleared me no shadow of a doubt would Raina still pick me or is she picking me because i'm the best euphonium player we're still going to say i think there is probably a very good junior going to come through on the euphonium right yeah where that's going to kind of opposite your interactions with asuka right because asuka was this third year when you were first year right teaching you all these things seemed impossibly impenetrably good but hey now we have this kid come in and she clears me very easily. Just, yeah, that'll be a fun one to navigate for sure. Yeah, if Rain is the one picking, I want to be the first picked. And then all these really fun faces here. Look at that. Look at that. You're telling me that's not adorable? Yeah, they need to get a room a bit. They're kind of all over each other. <laughs> But it's very cute. I love this. I love this. This is just glorious. Yeah, bro, this movie is fucking movie. OVA is gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. That was probably the highlight scene animation-wise. All the character stuff through there was just chef's kiss. It was beautiful. Then we get support from an unlikely source. We have our senpais here. They've all finished their exams. They've all passed their exams. I think the implication is that uh, Natsuki, Yuko, and Nozomi are all going to the same place. Obviously, Misere going to music school, which we learned in Liz and the Bluebird. So that's just great news. All our 
all that gang's gonna stick together. That's really fun. And of course, now that they're done with exams and stuff, they're just kind of checking up on things, seeing how things are going. Of course, Yuko would have a vested interest considering that she was the president last year. She wants to see how the new president is going. Kumiko, in a very Kumiko fashion here, like says, oh, we have a little bit of spare time. We could probably help, blah, 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 blah. Instead of congratulating them for passing, she immediately goes for, hey, can you help me with this? Which is not a very respectful thing to do, especially to Senpai, which Yuko picks up on in his... You know, being Yuko all about it. We love you. I I, I love her. She's so good. <laughs> you put a bow on a character like that, they're just good. It's fucking uh, Chika Fujiwara all over again. Um. Anyway, they don't tell Natsuki, which results in a funny scene later as well. This is another really, really fantastic scene. I love Kumiko going over to Misere and asking if she wants to participate. Like, hey, I know you were close with at least Nozomi and the other second years, right? This would be a fun last thing that you could do. Sorry, I can't quite do it. I'm off doing my Liz and the Bluebird journey. I'm being the Bluebird. I'm running away. I'm being set free. That whole thing, right? But I'm glad that you came and asked me. And that comes back to a lot of the, the stuff with Ririka in Liz and the Bluebird as well. Like, even if you can't make it, right? I appreciate being asked. I appreciate being included. I appreciate being thought about. And in Liz and the Bluebird, that's obviously a thing because uh, Nozomi left without telling you, right? And telling people things is important. Communication is important. Even if I can't make it, even if I change my mind, even if I, you know, cry and throw up and piss my pants and do whatever else, right? At least I'm being told about it. I'm not being left out. I'm being considered. And that's important. And all that is just in a little small scene. I really like this from Misery as well. Like, if you see Nozomi, tell her thanks for me. It's like, well, surely you can tell her yourself, right? But I just told you. She doesn't understand why that's socially weird. Very, very Misery stuff. Love it. The window here is also a metaphor as well. Should I close the window? It's just slightly ajar, open. No, it's fine. I'm happy with that window being slightly ajar. I'm happy with... I don't want the window all the way open. I don't want this whole thing with Nozomi to be exactly like it was before, but I am leaving that window of communication open at least a little bit. I'm not shutting myself off completely. We're just going on different paths. It does mean we can't be friends. Again, maybe I'm overanalyzing a window there, but you know. We get to see Natsuki here. She's finished her exams as well and is just kind of chilling. Kanade is also here and continues her little scuffle with, uh, with Natsuki, saying that, hey, you didn't notice my five millimeter haircut. There you go very small. Of course I wouldn't notice that. What are you talking about? Getting in the way. These two fighting again. <laughs> very fun. However, most importantly, we've now told Natsuki that she's participating. Yeah, just some final nice Yuko Natsuki bickering just to, you know, send us on our way. I do like the class watching as well. It's probably become a fixture of their class to watch these two bicker. I do like this from Kumiko as well. Kind of leaves them to argue on their own once she gets the tick off that it's okay. Like, I don't care about anything else here. I've seen this a million times. Are you sure it's okay to just leave them? Yep, they'll be fine. <laughs> So now we're well into November and practicing hard, and we start to focus a little bit more on Kamaya and Hazuki, right? We walk in here and Reina is giving some pretty stark criticism to the two of them, right? Hey, you're rushing, you're dragging, right? You're rushing because you don't have a good sense of rhythm, which we learn later, and you're dragging because you're too focused on breathing. You're too focused on it. You've got to feel it instead of doing it. It's a really hard one. Like, she's in a tough spot here, especially for a beginner. Some people are just natural, especially when they learn younger. Either way, Kumiko's also late because she's being pulled between two different things. Again, I've talked about it a lot, but we're playing off her timing right now. And I must say, I really like this piece, especially the marimba. I think it sounds fantastic in it, especially in contrast with the brass very early. We're calling her Subame-chan as well. I may switch over to that. I've had a lot of trouble with names on the channel recently, actually. And yeah, Kumiko basically says to her, let's practice the next day off. You know, the two of us. Because her confidence at the moment is kind of dwindling as a result. So... You know, a little bit of personal practice time wouldn't go astray. Also really like this, like Hazuki just volunteers to practice with her. Like, hey, I didn't need to go and single you out and ask you. You asked yourself. You saved me the hassle, which I really like. There's one of the scenes I'm talking about. It happens twice. She's like throwing punches and shit. I think essentially you're very competitive based off the end of the last film we saw, right? You want to compete with Kumiko on this. You want to beat her and do that kind of thing. You're putting on a friendly face right now, but you're trying very hard behind the scenes. 
You want to be victorious. You want to taste victory. Raina here asks if she can join practice as well. I don't think that'll help things. My teaching style and your teaching style do differ. I don't think you're doing the wrong thing. I just think I can do a different thing and that may work better. Also, this background is fantastic. Look at all these instruments. Look at the two con bases here. Just good. Yeah, these two are just besties now. Like, hey, does it bother you that I say that? Not really. You're just, you're not wrong in what you're doing. I just want to reassure you. You, you just be yourself. That's all you need to be. Really healthy. Love it. Hazuki's the first one to get a little bit of coaching here. Um, Kumiko comes up with the idea that she may be dragging the tempo because you're listening too hard. She's also not thinking about the time to breathe, right? Taking breathing into account. Which again, from the outside looking in, seems like a really, really obvious thing to point out, but... Again, I just don't know. Again, it's something that people that have been playing for a while are just better at. It's one of the basics. You probably got thrust in too early trying to do too much too quickly and didn't nail the basics and now are paying the price. You may have to go back and learn to breathe a little bit more. I also like learning to breathe as an idea, taking a step back, deep breaths, self-analysis, being critical of oneself, um, being objective, and figuring it all out. I do like how it all kind of clicks together like that. It's good. So then we have Tsubame-chan walk in. Um, she's with Inoue-san as well, who's, you know, starting off the metronome. I think she'll play better like this. And she does. It sounds fantastic. So if she can gain her own sense of rhythm, she'll be a much better player, you know? I do like how the issue between the two, uh, Hazuki and, uh, and Tsubame-chan here, is uh, the same. It's both breathing. That means all that stuff I just said about breathing, taking a step back and looking at yourself objectively applies to you as well. There's also an element of percussionists not looking at the people around them for cues on um, the rhythm, right? Like, hey, they may be watching the conductor, but you can gain that same kind of knowledge by looking at the people around you and what they're playing and when. And yeah, I like in both cases here, it seems like a very obvious thing. I'm forgetting to breathe and feel relaxed and that kind of thing. Breathing is important to the marimba as well. Maybe if we breathe in sync with one another, we'll get in sync rhythm-wise as well. Isn't that an important thing to learn? Something you should have learned that potentially was very obvious to you that you never thought to talk about? Back to basics. Basics are important. Goto-san was right. And yeah, after that, they started to practice that a little bit more, probably looking at you know, breathing and breathing on the same timing and that kind of thing, and help them to get better in sync. It's good. And gradually everyone starts getting better. Tsubame-chan's better. Hazuki is getting complimented by Mirei. Again, this is really fun because you're obviously the better player, right? And you're a year younger. Maybe something like that will happen to you next year. We'll see. Rain is a little bit jealous here because they've gotten instantly better after Kumiko's little coaching session, but that just means she's suited to being club president. Uh, Raina may be able to point out the problem, may be able to point out what's wrong, but may not have the deft touch to be able to coach, right? That's what makes you a better leader. That's what differentiates you from uh, Raina. You know, we may not have to have our little arc mirroring Asuka and Haruka, right? Where we think that Raina should be the better president and that kind of thing. Maybe we're past that now. Maybe we understand each other's strengths. I don't know. It'll be an interesting one. I think, yeah, they, they do a great job with it in this OVA singularly as well. Here we have Kanade punching the screen again, just looking really combative. She's really pumped up. Again, I really like this from her. It's a way better look than being the literal devil. Part of this angst is also pointed towards Kosaka as well. Maybe a bit of a uh, jealousy thing between um, Kumiko's relationship with Rainer as well, if you wanted to be coy about it. Calling it Team Kosaka, right? This is Team Kosaka, not Team Kumiko, Team Kosaka that we're fighting against. Well, that'll have to be Team Hisaishi then, right? Because that's your last name. No, we don't have somebody at the top. I guess you could say we're Team Pacifist instead. Pacifist being one of your themes for from uh, the last movie. We also praise this particular technique. Also, look at her walk cycle over there. That's insane. Um, because, hey, we're, we're spreading people out and getting them more individualistic. If Taki-sensei is watching right, then he's able to pick stars that he can build free choice pieces around, right? Like, he noticed that Misere was a star, that she's very, very good. So, hey, let's show off our stars. Give her the solos, that kind of thing, right? I noticed Rain is a good player. Let's make sure there's a good trumpet part because it'll make us look the best it's pretty obvious stuff gives taki sensei a look at everybody potentially we'll see a um a subami chan solo 
maybe next season. I don't know. Maybe this gave her a little bit of shine. There's also a really interesting conflict between these two for when they start talking about next year. Uh, Kumiko is looking forward to how fun it'll be, and where Kanade is kind of looking forward to the competition. But then she kind of catches herself and she's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe it shouldn't be about how fun it is, right? But Kumiko goes to herself, she's like, is that the correct thing that a club president should be saying instead of looking forward to competing and that kind of thing? But then Kanade reassures her, right? Isn't that the correct thing to look forward to? The fun of it all? Isn't that why we're here? At least some of it? Well, yes and no. It's the conflict of the series and all, but maybe that's what makes Kumiko a good president, right? And then you're unusually kind today. I'm always kind, you know. Not always, but today. It's very, very cute. Here comes my favorite scene. It's just a little metaphor for Kumiko effectively teaching somebody and feeling good about it. It feels good. It's kind of represented in the scene through the carrying and the movement of this marimba. We're helping each other, right? We're pushing from either end. Sometimes I'm leading, sometimes you're leading. It's a little metaphor for coaching. It's very cute. So it is physical coaching. It is the coaching of the playing of the marimba. But here it becomes a little bit of an emotional coaching as well, right? Uh, Subame-chan is asking about what competition is like. Is it scary? I wouldn't say it's scary, but I do get nervous. I love this line as well. Scary is something bad's going to happen. Where nervous is a little bit more like, I'm uneasy, I'm excited, I'm anxious, I'm all these emotions. And it's that combination she feels instead of strictly negative emotions. Like, hey, you should be excited to show off how good you are. And I think that's what she's trying to get across to Subame here. And this is a fantastic question as well. Subame-chan says, hey, I've always kind of relegated myself to being a second stringer. I've never thought that I would actually make the competition. But right now, is it okay for me to want to participate too? Of course it is. But sometimes you just need that push. And Kumiko says, nobody is stopping you. You should go on and pursue your goals and be awesome. And there she goes. Look at her. Like, this is fucking fantastic she's pushing off her feet from this point moving on after the coaching after the push from kumiko right she's able to push herself now and isn't that really rewarding for somebody as a leader right to watch some people take that kind of piece and go off and be a better person that's why leadership's fucking cool and yeah i may not think i'm a good president yet but i'm spurred on by subami chan's change of heart i'm feeling blissful and that's just well and good. That's just great. And essentially, that's basically the end of the movie. This is them kind of all in, hands all in. We're going to say, Kito Uji Faito, like a president would, like Haruka has done a number of times. And yeah, we kind of pause there. We get to hear the piece playing out a little bit, but we don't get to hear everybody's piece, which is a little bit of a sad sign. But again, it's only an OVA. So we get some beautiful real life looks at some stuff in Kyoto, as well as this crane of some kind flying away before we kind of just get introduced to everybody and i'm gonna spare everybody going through all of these but they were well produced and cute and stuff so that's all well and good right uh let's get some results up so this is the results for the the choice from the club members themselves the clarinet quartet one which is interesting because they're one of the last ones that was put together so i think that's kind of neat the brass septet um, which is uh, b -b 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 Kanade's group. They've come in second. And then we have the Sax Trio, um, which I didn't really note at all, but sure, they must be pretty good. Then we have the public voting, where we had the wind percussion octet um, with Frontline, the Sound of Youth, which is a very um, pointed name as well. Coming in first in the public vote, but we call that a little bit of a popularity contest because, again, the contrabass duet is coming in third. Must be somewhat of a popularity contest, right? The brass septet coming second in both votes, which surely must be, you know, depressing for Canada. But that's neither here nor there. So then we're just, you know, standing here. It's pretty cold. It's winter. We're eating various buns. Um, Rain is lamenting the fact that she bought the chocolate bun and not the meat bun, of course. And apparently the clarinets have made it through to the Kansai competition. They're doing quite well. And we didn't even no notice them at all. It was just kind of the culture of the club pushing excellence. I love that. I love this as a decision. We don't focus on the winners, basically at all. It's not about that. It's not about winning in this. It's about Kumiko's leadership style. It's way more what this OVA here is about. However, this is when they start to notice that, hey, our last competition will be the next band competition. It'll be next year's big thing. We've got to try our best. You know, it's nice teasing setup for season three. I really like it here. Yeah, we just confirmed to ourselves that we're going for gold at nationals. We zoom in on Kumiko, which is kind of scary. 
And so the next piece begins, which is a nice nostalgia trip because we haven't heard that in ages. This is what you say at the, the end of an episode leading into the next one. Fantastic. Then we have the credits and the song here from True is pretty good. I really like it. Real fanfare vibe, as I said before. And there wasn't really anything at the end from memory either. So we'll probably just leave it there. Um, yeah, that was even better on a rewatch. I actually really, really liked that. I thought that was good. Um, focused. Focused on Kumiko. For sure, for sure. I really like her stuff here. I really like how the characters all complemented and all kind of leads into the same thing. Um, it looks fantastic. It had the characters I liked in it. It's just good television, maybe. And I'm going to edit this and put it together and upload it. Sounds good to me. Um, so yeah, looking forward to season three next week. If you have any preference to what subset I use, please let me know. For now, I'm just doing subs, please. I'm imagining that's very similar to Crunchyroll subs or whatever's available for everybody else. We'll say. Wherever this thing's being streamed, I don't even know. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to say goodbye. So thank you. <laughs> goodbye. Thanks for watching. See ya.